five things to know for Tokyo 2020. After taking a couple week break, this is the first video of 2021 and man, is it a doozy. And the reason I say that is I had a plan for the kickoff video for the year and then last night, all the news hit about the potential for the cancellation of Tokyo 2020. So what I wanna do over the next couple minutes is really take you through what happened last night, what the implications are, and what is the roadmap for the next few months as we look towards the potential for Tokyo 2020 in the middle of summer. And with that, let's get to number one. So last night around 5 p.m. Pacific, a news hit from the Times in the United Kingdom that basically stated that the Japanese government privately had concluded that Tokyo 2020 would need to be canceled. And instead, Japan would need to look towards 2032 and the opportunity to potentially secure that bid since 2024 and 2028 have already been taken by Paris and LA respectively. As you can imagine, the reaction to that in the media was swift with it being retweeted, with it being uh, sent out throughout the internet. And what we saw as a result was quite a frenzy and that really led to what happened next. Now what happened next, because it was 5 p.m. Pacific and it was you know middle of the night in Europe, is that we saw a string of different bodies, including the United States Olympic Committee, the Australian Olympic Committee, and others saying that as far as they were aware, there was no changes and official information would come from the IOC, the Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee, and officially from the government of Japan. Then over the next few hours, denial after denial, and specifically even coming out with the IOC saying they categorically, and the government of Japan saying they categorically deny the rumors or there's any discussion around the cancellation of Tokyo 2020 next summer. So now that we have first that article that leaked from an anonymous source, and then now what we have is the denials coming. What does that mean and what are the implications? Most experts in media are really focused on March 25th, 2021, as the date where we will finally know whether or not Tokyo 2020 is a go or not. And the reason they're focused on that particular date is that is when the torch relay is supposed to start in Japan. Again, March 25th, 2021, and that will run all the way up through the July 23rd, 2021 kickoff of the games. And the, the thought is, is if that event does continue and does go ahead, that the Tokyo 2020 Summer Games will then effectively be confirmed and move forward. But what I wanna be really clear about is that it'll be confirmed that it will potentially be, you know, be athletes, but it won't necessarily be confirmed that all you know spectators will be there, what percentage of spectators will be there, whether or not those will be you know, only internet or only local people in Japan, residents of Japan that are able to attend or potentially international. There's still potentially other dates that could be later, maybe 60 and 90 days where those things are finally determined. So there's quite a few things, you know, to still go in terms of the roadmap, in terms of specific dates that we're looking for. So what does that mean for the next few months? I've mentioned this in some of my videos in the past, but we really are living in a state of uncertainty. And while a lot of people want certainty today about whether or not the Tokyo 2020 Olympics will go ahead and whether there'll be fans there and if there'll be full fans and international fans, we're just not in a place right now where that can be 100% guaranteed. And so what we'll see, I suspect, over the next weeks and months is some level of uncertainty with articles like this happening and the entire range of possibilities are there, right? Um, you could see anything from a can cancellation to a full event with fans, we're still six months away from the event. And that's very interesting because as we look at the roadmap, which I'll talk about next, there's really two ways it's being viewed. The first is, is there's only six months left until Tokyo 2020. We have to make a decision right now. The other way is, hey, um, we still have six months and we can wait several more months before making these final decisions. But we should be clear that the, the implications are pretty significant in the case that it is you know, canceled. It's significant for all of the organizing, all the international bodies, the revenue associated with the events across the world. And specifically, it's obviously hugely impactful for all the athletes that have waited their entire lifetime for this one particular moment, for this one particular summer that's already been put on delay for one year 
and now they're looking at that window potentially closing forever for them, which would obviously be a, a, just an unspeakable tragedy for those athletes that have trained their entire lives for this. The other thing is that very quickly in, in focus, what we will see is Beijing 2022, which is only six months after Tokyo 2020 based on the current schedule. So let's talk a little bit more about the roadmap and what we're likely to see in the coming weeks and months. What it means is what I've been saying all along is that if you are planning or considering going to Tokyo 2020 uh, this upcoming summer, uh, you know what the thing you're gonna need to do is continue to be flexible. Flexible in your planning, flexible in what may eventually happen, what events you may attend, be able to attend. Because as, of, as, as everyone knows, as we've learned over the past nine months, 10 months, is that there's nothing that's very certain right now as the world continues to fight through um, the coronavirus pa pandemic that has you know, spread throughout the world as, as a global pandemic. And as part of that, you'll need to be nimble. A part of the things that you could see if you haven't booked hotels, if you haven't booked flights, you may see those things continue to decline in price and specifically around uh, the lack of certainty given what's happened in the last couple of days in media in terms of what the attendance might look like. So if you are looking to go to, to, to the Olympics, again, you can still continue planning. There's still some risk that you take in purchasing tickets or other types of things, but you are in many cases very likely to be able to secure refundable hotels and accommodations, which is a huge positive, which is hardly ever a uh, possibility for the Olympics, and also potentially refundable airlines if the event uh, does not happen and we continue to be in the state uh, that we are today with reduced travel, with an inability to travel uh, to countries such as Japan. So that's it for this week. I thought it was important to kind of take a break from the normal news because this was the most major news I think we've seen in some time, and it's something we'll continue to watch together over the coming days, weeks, and months. Have a great week.